Hey everyone, today we're going to show you how to install a dual Z axis upgrade kit. So follow along. So this is the kit that I purchased from Amazon and I'll have the link to it in the description for you. Today, uh, the date of the filming, it's um, $42.99 for the dual Z axis upgrade kit. Okay, here's the kit as it comes boxed, and um, here are the instructions. I guess they're more of an assembly diagram that shows you the parts and how everything should be put together. Um, but this is what you're going to get in the box. The first part you're going to need is already pre-assembled. It's the stepper motor with the uh, connector here for the screw, and then this uh, little bracketing mount, or mounting bracket. Um, when this came out of the box, you can kind of see that this is offset a little bit. It was just a little bit off. It was overhanging a bit. I don't know if you can see that right there. So we had to loosen up these two bolts here and here. And, um, and then we're gonna lay this flush on the bed and then retighten these screws so that this whole back thing here is flush so that you have the, the screw um, uh, drive screw turning properly and not angled away from the gantry. And here's the mounting hardware, screws, bolts for, uh, I'm sorry, screws and nuts for the uh, stepper motor here. And these are countersunk. They're just going to go in the hole like that. And then we're going to put these nuts on the back. Here you can see I've placed the countersunk bolts into the slots here on this bracket. And then the T-nut, these are both M4s, the T-nuts are on the uh, back here. And when you turn these when they're slid into the slots of your gantry, these will rotate and lock into place and then you can continue to tighten them down. So we're just going to slide the stepper motor so that these nuts are lined up into the slot. And then we're just gonna make sure that it's, it's all lined up with the machine you can look at the other side for reference as well. It hangs over just a little bit, and these stepper motors look almost identical in size. So um, just make sure that it's lined up with the gantry. You can see this um, this screw, this drive screw here, is lined up with this center portion of the gantry here. And so we want to make sure that this is lined up as well. So there we got it lined up, and we're just going to take our Allen wrench and carefully rotate the bolts or screws, whatever you want to call them. And you will see that uh, the T-nut on the back will rotate and lock into place, and then we continue tightening. As you can see, the T-nuts have rotated 90 degrees, and we have slightly tightened down the the bolts so we're going to once again take a look at it as far as alignment goes and it looks like it needs to go uh, it's different the angle on the recording the phone here is off from what I see um, but we need to go to the right just to, just a hair just like a partial millimeter another way you can kind of test it to see if it's in alignment before you tighten these screws up is uh, to put the screw, the drive screw in and just eyeball it. And once again, this phone is off on the angle, so it's not gonna be giving you the visual that I get. But this looks almost exactly centered up with the gantry there. So once you've determined that you're lined up properly, you can continue tightening up the uh, countersunk sunk, uh, bolts the rest of the way. Next, we're going to remove the wheels and uh, 
the bolts and nuts that are on the back of these wheels on the on the gantry. We slid the um, hot end all the way over to the other side. So it's uh, nice and stable now. So you just take your wrench and your Allen wrench and just remove these. We're gonna reuse the wheels and replace them with a little bit longer bolts. All right, so we can just rotate this plate down and pull it back a little bit and then rotate it down and slide the bolt out. Set it here and then this plate comes off just like that. Here's the packet of new bolts and uh, nuts. You can see that this original one is uh, looks like about a centimeter or 10 millimeters shorter the old one is shorter than the new one so we've got the right lengths here we're going to go ahead and install those put the new bolt with the nut behind the plate and then slide it back in there and there's a little slot a hole actually drilled out for that and then just let it sit we'll reinstall these um, allen head bolts where they were. I'm just going to do it loosely for now and then we can align it the way that it's supposed to be. There we go. So here you can see I've got the new bolt in place and then I've retightened these two bolts here and here. Now this is pretty simple. If you get confused, all you have to do is just come over here and look at how this is assembled. And you're gonna see pretty much the same setup. This plate is uh, pretty much the same thing. So it just goes over here like that. And now we have our other new bolts and spacers. We're gonna replace these smaller bolts, shorter ones with the new longer ones. And you'll notice in the separate in the uh, previous setup we had the these parts going in this direction. Uh, now with this extra plate here, as you can see on this side, we're gonna have to <coughs> rotate that over as you can see I've done here. Whoops. And um, so the spacer now is gonna go here and the end of the bolt is gonna go over here. I mean sorry, the head of the bolt. So that's how we're gonna replace those. Also I want to note that we have to leave these two Allen bolts loose so that we can adjust this with the wheels properly centered. So don't tighten these up all the way. Make sure that they're still loose. And then we can um, do fine tuning adjustments with this piece here to center the wheels. like that. And now you can see I've put the new spacer that came with the kit here and only put these two nuts on here so far. I'm going to leave that one for last because it's hard to hold and uh, put in. So I'm going to secure this plate a little bit on this side first with these two and then work on that one. I can see that I've got these two somewhat secured, but the plate is still floppy and loose. And that way I can put the remaining parts on the other screw back here, the harder one. A little bit easier. So I've got this piece here, which is actually 
that hole is oblong to help you with adjustments. So you want to make sure that this part is in the gantry side, um, as opposed to on the other side here, they've got it opposite. But, uh, but in this case, the Ender 3 V2 has this plate that is a little oblong. Actually, the hole is, is circular, but this piece is oblong to adjust with. So make sure you put this spacer on here in this position. And now we can just line everything up and um, put the uh, remaining nut on. Not tightened all the way because we're going to have to adjust so that the, the wheels are all evenly spaced. And I'll show you where that adjustment is once we get these things a little bit more snug. There we go. So they're just a little snug. And we'll go back here to this piece right here. And you can throw your wrench on it. And that will adjust this direction back and forth so that the wheels are evenly snug against this side and that side. Now we're going to insert the um, drive screw. And it just falls right through there. Let's make sure it's seated all the way inside. So I took a flat blade screwdriver and just kind of pushed it in there and, and twisted it just a little bit to open it up just a hair. Now this is not the kind of flexible metal that you're going to want to pry on too hard because you could probably snap it. Uh, there's a gap over here. You can see that it'll spread apart. So it's opened up a little bit more and we just thread it, thread the uh, drive screw down in there a little bit just to get it kind of snug. And then we'll tighten up the, um, the Allen bolt here to snug it down even more. There we go. Don't strip it. We've got the uh, these two bolts on the coupler tightened up. And um, what you want to do is check your wheels to make sure that they're even in, as far as their tightness on the gantry here. And um, they should rotate. They shouldn't be stuck in any way. They should be pretty evenly, I guess, torque as far as you spinning them with your hands. Um, if you tighten it up and using this adjustment over here, you can, you can change the feel of how they rotate with your fingers. So you just want to make sure that they're even because this will move this actually this wheel puts pressure in or takes it off. And so just make sure that they're, you know, not wobbly, but secure. Let's make sure we've tightened down these uh, plate bolts. Don't want that coming loose. And this plate should be flush with the gantry. There's a little slot here to put the Allen through to tighten that one up with. And then you can finish it by putting it in the side there. And next we're going to finish tightening the uh, bolts on the wheels. Again, not super tight. They do have a nylock. It is a nylock nut, so it's got some plastic in there that will keep it from backing off. But you want these wheels to be able to spin freely. So just check them again. And then you can also compare them with the other side, see how tight or loose those are. And then run the gantry up evenly a little bit. It's pretty solid, it's way more solid than it was. And check them again. I like to run it up a little bit higher 
because you're going to get different um, a different feel depending on what position the Z height is. That's pretty good. And if you need to make an adjustment, just loosen everything back up again and and do it again. Moved the the Z axis all the way to the top just to make sure that it feels smooth when it goes up. And check these wheels again. They they all feel manipulativable. <laughs> Is that a word? Probably not. Um, so the next piece we have are these um, these bearings that go on the top, and they just solidify the top of the Z-axis um, drive screws. And we're gonna work on that next. Once again, we've got uh, bolts with T nuts. You can see these bolts here that they provided. Drop those in, and we will thread the T-nut. Make sure you get the right end on there first. It's kind of awkward because they, uh, they are inset as well, so we'll have to use a, an Allen to hold it. There we go. So you can kind of see how that's on there and then this is going to slide in up here that t-nut's going to go in that slot so that's what we'll do next we'll take this and slide it right over the top this is going to be interesting how this works There we go. So we've moved the, the gantry down just to allow for a little more flexibility on these drive screws. And my other side, the stock one, has never been completely straight. It's always had a little bit of turnout there on the top. So I'm not too concerned about how when these turn, they're a little bit wobbly. You kind of see that but this will help kind of stabilize it, make it stronger at least. And there's enough play in here, I think that it's gonna be just fine. I placed the other side in, tightened it down, and now we just do the same on this side. Just make sure it's still lined up here. And then just turn these until they rotate and then they start tightening up. I don't think it's super critical that you have this piece on the top here. So if you have a filament guide like I did, I like this thing that went in here. Um, this is probably not gonna fit anymore, but I'm actually switching to the uh, dryer box method here and the dryer box can sit over on the left and then feed in sideways there. But uh, you know, you just do what you have to do and whatever you think is gonna work for you with or without these. I think it'd be fine without them though. All right, so we've got our hardware done. Let's just go through a little mental checklist, make sure we got everything done. These are tightened up here, those two. These are adjusted and uh, the wheels spin freely and these nuts are tight. These two are tight. Uh, we've checked this, these are tight. So now all that's left is the wiring. And um, one thing I wanna note also, this comes with some extra brackets and I it shows here on the photo uh, there must be an Ender 3 with the power supply off to the side. So ours is built in with the Ender 3 V2, so you don't need this part. And there's another one in here as well that you're not going to need. But uh, they do give you, I didn't even notice that wrench in there, um, the wiring harness and the Y. So we're going to use those to connect the motors. So, uh, Creality didn't really make it very user-friendly for doing upgrades on the board and everything. Um, but, you know, it's either that or buy a Prusa for $1,000. So here we are upgrading. Make sure you block this thing up and, so that it's not harming any of the components while it's tilted over. Um, and we're just going to remove these three bolts right here. Access to the motherboard here 
and you can see in there there's the Z plug and then next to that to the left is the E plug so we're going to pull the Z plug out because that goes to the stock stepper motor for the singular stock stepper that's already on there here's a fun fact and I kind of forgot about this it's been about a year since I've worked in here but they actually used a hot glue gun to glue these terminals on there. So they stick them in there and then they glue them so they won't fall out because the board's upside down when the printer's right side up. And so what you're going to need is one of these little pick tools to kind of pull, carefully pull the, the glue off and then pull your Z axis plug out. Okay, the splitter, I guess, into the Z axis there on the board and here's your old Z um, wiring to the uh, original stepper and we're going to plug that into one of these ends. This is the longer cable that's supplied with the kit. You can see the six pin end is here and then we've got the other end, the four pin, into the splitter that they gave us and then we also put the original Put our original Z wiring into the other side of the splitter there. And now we're just going to run this cable along these existing cables up to the new stepper motor. Coming out the back now with all the rest of the wiring is the new plug for the new stepper motor and also uh, the original. Uh, wiring for the original stepper motor. So we're just going to plug these back in. We've got both stepper motors plugged back in. Now before we turn this thing on, we want to make sure that the the gantry here, the ZX, is, is um, perfectly level. So I've got the caliper here and I'm just going to run it right up against the rails and measure. Make sure it's flush, 40.15. And on this side, you can use any tool that's, you know, on both sides, but I like using the caliper and there's 40.12 roughly. So that's uh, definitely within specs for us. Got it all powered up. Now we're going to go ahead and test the uh, Z movement. I'll start by auto homing first. Now we'll test uh, by running it up a little bit. All right, so everything's working good. And I just wanted to do one last final test. So I ran it up to uh, roughly about 175 millimeters or so, um, just to see if they were still equally spaced here from the gantry at the top. And uh, the one side was just slightly less than a millimeter off. So I went ahead and cranked this side up by hand while it was turned off. To where it matches it exactly on both sides. So now I'm going to rehome it, and that should be good. It should stay exactly in sync. So we'll go auto home, and it should run them both exactly the same. And there we are. The print job or the uh, installation is complete. And uh, next, I'll do a test print. For bed leveling. All right, that's it. I want to thank you for watching the video and I hope that uh, I helped you 
install your dual Z-axis kit. Uh, follow the links in the description to purchase your kit. Everything that you get from my Amazon affiliate links helps support my channel until I can get a thousand subs subscribers. So uh, give it a like if you want, and uh, we'll see you again on the next video. Have a good one.